Hello and welcome to the third part of this tutorial on our YouTube channel. In the previous video, we looked at how values, um, hydraulic values or parameters can be added to the tank and the pipe using the uh, editor here for the map to bars. For this video, we are going to look at how the hydraulic parameters for the nodes or the junctions will be added and also how we can run a simulation and read the reports. So, having finished with the pipe uh, values, let's click on the box here and let's scroll down to where we have junctions or scroll up to where we have junctions and click so from our sketch on the drawing workspace we have a total number of seven junctions and that is why they all appeared on the map editor here so for us to have access to these junctions, I will close this. One way of doing that is by double clicking on the nodes or you can simply click on the map editor here and this will appear, the same dialog box. What we are primarily concerned about as it relates to the nodes is the Elevation. So for now, we shall input values of the elevation for each of the junctions of this um, network. So for now, let's add values for the elevation at each junction. So we shall start with junction 1 and we shall add an imaginary value of let's say 35. Let's go to junction 2. Let's add 35. Let's go to junction 3. Let's add 34. Junction 4. Let's add 33. Let me shift the editor. Now let's go to con con um, junction 5. Uh, let's add 32. Junction 6. Let's add 31. Junction 7. Junction let's add... 31. Now, another thing we need to do is to try and straighten these pipes to make it look neater. One way of doing this is by clicking on the arrow button and then for us to adjust this pipe P3, we may choose to click on J1, but for now, P1 and P2 look okay. So let's click on P4 and you can adjust. You can see P3 has been adjusted. Let's click on J3. And we keep on adjusting. And we can see that P4 and P5 are neater now. And then let's click on, okay, pipe 6 is okay. Pipes 8 and 7 still look jagged. So let's adjust by clicking on junction 6. And let's, let's click and then begin to adjust. Thank you. 
the the problem we are facing with pipe seven was because it was not drawn properly but we can adjust it let's click on pipe seven and click on the cross sign here which shows delete and we can delete it let's draw it afresh let's click on pipes and then click on j3 and click and there we have it no problem pipe 11 is showing but we can always edit so let's double click and then on the pipe id we can edit by deleting 11 and replacing it with 7 and there you have it so let's let's try to adjust it again let's click the arrow and then click on junction 6 and begin the adjustments and there it's okay let's move on to pipes 9 and 10 pipe 9 looks jagged so let's click on j7 and then once the cursor starts once it starts blinking we can adjust so i'll stretch this further and And I think it looks neater for now. So having prepared our network, let's run the simulation. Now the button here that shows run could be used to run the simulation. Another option is to go to projects, click on run analysis and you will still have the same command but let's use this let so let's run the analysis and there we have it the run status of this simulation shows that it is successful had it been it was not successful there would have been an error report and the error report will indicate the problems or the uh, obstacles or bottlenecks that may have arisen from the simulation and then it is expected that the designer should make the proper amends before we look at the results there is a need for us to look at some certain uh, hydraulic uh, related matters concerning the uh, modeling that we have just carried out now what we have just done is that we are supplying water from tank one to this region using the pipes as means of conveying the water needs of this area now the consumers or the end users may be households or public places so if for instance we have households around here where we we were trying to illustrate an example from the beginning that we are supplying we may want to supply a water uh, you know a distribution system to an estate so what it means is that all along these pipes there will be houses or residential areas where the sources of water will finally reach its end users in reality for practical purposes the nodes are usually used to determine the base demands if we click on j7 for instance we'll see that we left it blank however we left it blank simply for the sake of uh, this tutorial in reality all these all the junctions must have nodes and those nodes will eventually and um, must have um, base demands now those demands will be in the form of flow or uh, 
in this case, I would not want to use discharge because we are not dealing with a, a storm uh, channel or storm water design. Now, what I'm trying to imply here is that you need to know the demands at each junction. The total sum of these demands should be equal to your, your water supply needs from the tank. This way, you will know that your design meets the criteria for supplying the needs of the consumers here. And one way of the determination of what the consumers need is to determine what we call the per capita demand. So if, for instance, on this axis, on this axis, we have 10 residential areas. And if we assume that for each residential area, we have four occupants. And each of these occupants, according to the design or regulation of your country's uh, uh, reg uh, needs for per, what we call per capita demand, what each person is entitled to when it comes to water supply. If we assume that each occupant requires one um, 100 liters of water per day for his needs, then it means that the per capita demand or per capita consumption of that individual is 100 liters per capita per day. So that means that for each building, you multiply that 100 liters by four, by four, giving you 400 liters per capita per day for each building. Now we have a total of 10 buildings, meaning that you multiply the 400 by one thousand by 10, giving us 4,000 liters per uh, uh, per day. Now, what it means here is that at the end of the day, each of these nodes will supply those needs so that there will not be shortage of water supply. And another thing is that we must understand that a factor must be introduced. The factor could be in the range of 1.3 to 2.4 so that if you have a demand of the 4,000 liters per day you multiply by a factor of let's say 2 that should be that for this region you need about 6,000 liters the reason for doing this is because in the course of the pipe flow there might be leakages there might also be needs, maybe waste for wastages and other unforeseen circumstances so that at the end of the day, the consumers are not shortchanged. However, for this discussion, it will be discussed in another video. So let's just look at our results. So one way of you know, checking our results is by, we click on this button, which shows table. So when we click on this, a dialog box will show up indicating whether to select a table to create the network nodes or the network links or pipes. If we click on the network nodes, it will give us a table showing the information based on the model that had been simulated for this network. So it will show us the pressure to show us the head at all the pipe junctions. However, the demand wasn't shown because we did not input values of the demand. So if we had added values of the demand, in reality, based on, the, on what is on ground as it regards to the number of consumers at that point in time, we should have values 